Hey guys, Chief Rudy here, and this is the behind the scenes for Immortal Grace. This one is track 6 from Wreckage, and I'm going to be showing you that pretty soon, but for now, I want to say a big thank you to all of you who subscribed, because I've just hit 100 subscribers. That's pretty awesome. Like, I started this channel not really expecting it to go anywhere, but um, now I'm at 100 subscribers, so thank you guys. And now let's go into the behind the scenes of Immortal Grace. So this right here is the project for Immortal Grace. So right off the bat, I'll just show you guys, I used 36 audio tracks for this track, and the tempo is 141 BPM. And I just accidentally hit the keyboard. So right here, this is the main bass. Um, I'm gonna play the whole thing for you, and then I'll break it down. So this is the main FM synth that plays throughout the whole track. Um, and this is the new Citrus. I made this in the old Citrus on FL Studio 12.2, but I just recently got the update, so it's in the new Citrus now. And I really like how this looks, by the way. Some of you may not, but I think it's a good look. I really like how they kind of re remade it, and they also made it resizable. I think the resizable is a really good feature. So anyway, that's enough on that. Now into the synth. So. I'm playing it right here on A1 since Immortal Grace is in A. That's the key, that's the key Immortal Grace is in. Um, and that's the pedal. So, it's kind of a typical FM bass, except I put the unison all the way up to 9. It be before. And I put it up to 9. So, it has 9 voices in unison. That's kind of a lot for FM bass, and normally that wouldn't really work, but it worked with this one. So, now to show you what I did for this bass. So in Operator 1, pretty simple, or pretty default for um, um, a FM synth, I just put it onto Operator 1 with this um, uh, triangle wave. So I put a triangle wave on here with a mode X, um, this is the cutoff running right here that goes... <laughs> So that's what allows it to get the cutoff. And then in Operator 2, I have the same thing, also 2.0 for the frequency, I have that, the same thing in Operator 1. And then for Operator 3, I'm running a triangle wave again with 32.0 for the frequency. Same for Operator 4, just the same thing, triangle for 32. And then on Operator 5, I put it onto a rectangle wave here with 64 for the frequency. And the same with operator 6 to 64. So basically by having the last two be this wave, it does affect it a little bit. It makes it more distorted and I really like that sound. So that's what I used here. And also when you're making FM synths, make sure to get the frequency to build up every two octaves. Uh, every two operators otherwise it won't sound very good so that was the first one so for filter one i engaged filter one filter two filter three all the way i didn't make any changes to them just in, in of themselves they do have some effects that they put on like a high pass filter here another high pass filter and then another filter going through here so that's basically what's um Going through here, just kind of some basic stuff, just two high passes and then an SVF. <clears throat> so that's what I have there, as well as operator 1 isn't running through anything. Like 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 all have amounts engaged. Like 2 is going up to 100, 3 is going up a slight percentage, 4 is going to negative maybe 25%. And then operator 5 plus maybe 15%, operator 6 plus like 7%. And those are all going directly to the output, which is right here. And then the filters also go directly to the output. So that's what's going on inside of Citrus. Just engage all the filters and all the operators. Only thing that's not engaged is the effects. But um, I don't really need much of that because so much stuff is already engaged, everything but the effects. So I basically utilized a lot of stuff in Citrus for the synth. And I put this to track 16 where I put it through a patcher. So this is the patcher I put that through. And I have a Vocodex on it. 
So like it wasn't sounding that good, so then I put a Vocodex on it, and that severely helped it. So if something's not sounding super good, and you're trying to make a bass, you can just put a Vocodex on it, and like 9 times out of 10, it'll sound pretty good. So I put the wetness in the SG up to 100%, because I, I really like these settings when it's full wetness and full SG. It, I just think that makes it sound really nice, as well as I put up the bands, not all the way, because when they're full... I just thought it sounded a little too full, a little too loud, so I th right here is about where I kept it. And I put the gender type to male to get a little bit more bassy, and I put up the reverb kind of real thing all the way up, and I turned off the draft. You can tell that makes a big difference, and this one I didn't want this bass to be like super watery, I wanted this to be pretty crisp, so I took off the draft. And that's what I did inside of the Vocodex. Just kept it at 47 bands of distribution as well. And I have a Maximus running some compression where I boosted the lows inside of here and the highs. I put up the highs quite a bit because I really wanted to pop those out since this was a bass. Some of you may think that if you're running a bass that you would want to boost out the highs, uh, the lows like this, but that actually is not what you want because if you hear you just hear sub right now so when you take that out you can hear some of the harmonics and then when you do this you can hear even more of the harmonics so that's kind of what i was thinking in here is especially with basses you want to get the highs out much more than the lows i still put out the lows because i wanted to get some of the sub in there but you still have to equal that out with some highs I did this inside of a compressor. This isn't really an EQ. It just compressed the highs and lows differently. And then I ran it through an EQ where I boosted some mids. This as compared to this. And I put it on a wave shaper for some distortion. This kind of just ran in some distortion. A very simple wave. It's not even that much of a distorted wave, but it still ran some distortion through the synth. And I put it through another EQ here. This is the EQ UO. That's what the plugin's called. And this is graphic EQ. So basically, it has eight different places you can EQ, eight different parts of the sound. And I just did the first one to boost some more mids here. And the reason I like I use this over this, like I use both, just kind of some difference. Though this one, um, this is a lot easier for me to work with, but I just use this one. Just to have some difference. Also, this one's resizable, so that's nice. So you can resize it to make edits. And on the effects, I put on a reverb. You can probably tell that there was a reverb based by that background noise right after it plays. So now that I've showed you all the elements of the sound, now I'll go into this part. So this is the cutoff, and then this is the Modex channel volume. So this is basically the volume of this clip. So that if this was high, this would affect much more. So let's just make this unique and I'll show you what I mean. So when this is full... See, that has much more of an effect than this. It's because this is... This clip is enabling this Modex clip right here to be at 100%. This is enabling it to be at like 2%. So... I did that in the beginning to make it much more soft, so when the drop, then I let it out, come out completely. So that's what those clips are doing. And then this is the pattern it's playing. If you wanted to copy that for something. Um, so that's what I'm running with the bass here, it's just running an equal pattern of the same thing until the drop. And then I have this sound, I just called it Creepy, um, because I lack some creative names sometimes. But this is it, it's kind of just a bass wobble thing. So um, I'm just going to play it on the playlist for now. So this is the filter cutoff, and that would be this knob right here. So I enable it from 0 to about here, and it resets. 
in the intro. It does it a lot slower, but basically it's doing the same thing. So they don't have harm or resizable yet, but I hope that Image Lion can do that pretty soon. So, for now, I'll boost the harmonics out a little more so you can see what's going on in there. I'll do this so you can see it because I'm right here. And with this bass, I put the pitch all the way down and I'm playing at the note of A2 in that octave. And in of itself, I have an envelope running a filter 1 frequency envelope. So I'm going to boost the filter all the way, and you can hear it a lot more now than without the envelope. It's just like a flat out saw wave with some vocoders that I'll show you later. And I have three voices of unison on it, it kind of just to separate it out and make it more bassy and growly and watery, as well as even put on some harmonizers. Otherwise it sounds like this, and that's really, I didn't like that, so I added in some harmony. And I thought it sounded a lot better. As well as I have a prism on to negative 100% going up. It's not just flat. Otherwise, it would be doing this. So I have it going up on the times mode instead of the plus mode. This would be the default, but I put on the times on up to do this. And I put the pitch all the way down, like I said before. Um, three voices of unison blurred. Um. I think that's all I did inside of Harmor. And then I routed this through track 10, where I put on a patcher. And this is the vocoder I was talking about. Um, it's through a vocodex with full wetness, full SG. The real reverb is up all the way. The draft is off. It did sound nice with the draft, but it felt like something was kind of blocking it, so I took it off. It kind of seemed a little muffled with the draft on, so I took that off. And I put the band values up to very close to 100%, but not quite. So it's like right there. So that's what I do with the Vocodex, as well as I put on another compressor, just compressing, well, compressing everything, but mainly the highs, because the highs are boosted the most. So that's what I have in the compressor. And then I have an EQ doing very little. Just kind of boosting these three in the high section a little bit, like slightly. So that's all I have going through the patcher, and then I turn the volume. No, I've kept the volume the same because the compressor kind of did its job. So that's what I have going for that bass sound. It's kind of like the bass line of everything. So with this sub bass, it's really just a... Well, that's way low because my octave is still down from the basses. So it's just some sub here, and I just made this in a citrus, I just took the pitch all the way down, and I decreased it down to 1 here on the operator 1. That's all, that's it. I might have done some in track, no, I did nothing on track 19, I just routed it because I like to have everything in the mixer so I can visualize it. And it's really it's just playing this. And if you didn't hear anything there, your speakers are not broken. This is because this is a really low frequency. You need some really high-end speakers to be able to hear it. Or ear, or headphones. So, that was basically all the bass. So there's three basses just in of the intro. I put this bass kind of for some high-end on a bass to get harmonics and an interesting sounding bass. This one is kind of a bass line to fill up kind of the spectrum, it sounded really empty without this. And then this sub bass is really to fill in everything else that these two basses don't do. I added this in at the very end of the song because I was listening to it and it just sounded empty so I just added this in and that helped a little bit more. And then right on the beginning I have a kick right here with a crash. Just a normal kick with some reverb I got from Fruity Reverb too as well as the crash. And I put this to track six, so I turned it all the way up. And I didn't put any effects on the crash. And I have some hi-hats. Playing 16th notes. And I put this on to track three. Oh, whoop. And I put this on to track three here. 
Um, where I didn't turn the headset all the way. Because with hi-hats, like, they should be able to be heard, but you don't want them overly loud, otherwise it, the mix just doesn't sound very good. So they should be present, but not like overly present, if, like, if that kind of makes sense. Just to where they're loud, but not overly loud. It's like you can kind of hear them here, but they're not the main focus. If the hats are the main focus, you need to turn them down. And I have some noise coming in as it goes into the first little verse here. So I'm going to show you the noise right now. And this noise, I just made through GMS. Just took the noise, all at 100%. And on track 15, I didn't do anything. Just like I said before, I like to map everything on the mixer. And this is just the cutoff, where I got the cutoff right here. And then I have this little loop. And I did make this loop from scratch, so it may look like it's just an effect, but I did indeed make it from scratch. So, let me see if uh, I probably don't have all the steps to where I made it. So, I'm going to stop the recording for now, I'm going to come back in a bit, and I'm going to have everything right here, and I'm going to show you how I did it. Hey, so I'm back, and I got all the elements to how I made this right here. So basically how you make that is you just lay out some chords in a piano roll like this. Now once you're done with your chords, then you make a recording of it. And then you go on to stretch, and you stretch the recording to be like that. Now once you have it stretched, you see they all look the same, and then you can play it like this, once it's stretched. So this one sounds way too high pitch, and that is because I put the pitch down on that one. Looks like on here I did this. So then I just took the pitch from here on time stretching and went from here to all the way up here. And that made it sound better. So that is how I made that element. So I'll just get rid of these now and paste this all over in here. So just recording chords from a whole measure long into one bar and repeat it four times. So you just have to make a recording and how you make a recording is you just go to like master and Edison, you just record and then you just play it and it would go in here. And then, oh well. I should show you how to take it out. And then once you get it in Edison, you press this button here, and it will produce it. And it'll push it, and it'll sp um, it'll go like somewhere randomly on the playlist. It just spawns it kind of randomly. And just go to find it. But enough of that. Because this is the behind the scenes of Immortal Grace, not how to make weird sounds in G3. So, um, this part in the verse, it starts coming in with some drums. Actual drums now. So I did keep the hi-hat separately, since they were separate the whole time, it was easier just to keep them to keep going like this on their own separate track. And then I had the drums in here. So if you were cu curious on how I use the snare, just a normal snare, um, I boosted the volume and put on reverb. That's it. It's pretty simple to tune snares like that. And is anything else going on? I have noise decreasing coming in. Some crashes, the bass. I have this, these chords I showed you that have been sped up. And now the bass up here does, is not being limited anymore by this clip to bring it down to 2%. So it's a little bit more free now. And then on the bridge here, where I where it kind of calms down to go up to the rise, you can see where it fades out. The bass is not even louder. Now. 
and I have this creepy kind of wobble base fading in. Oh, where'd I go? Okay, so it's fading in, and I have it fade in because it's rising, so I wanted to fade it in. And I have the sub bass going. I still have snares kind of popping it. Oh, it got a little laggy there. Um, and then I have the kicks coming in here, just speeding up. Solo them. So now, I'm gonna show you how I made these little high-pitched squeals. I'm gonna show you how I made this. This was actually a preset I got from Seamless. He called it Pew Pew. Um, so basically, I'm just gonna show you what's going on inside of the synth though. So, operator one is running a sine wave at 8.0 for the frequency. Um, and that is basically getting it a higher pitch. It's putting it octaves higher. So every 2.0 for the frequency would be an octave up. So 2 to go to the next octave would be 4. One octave higher. And then one octave higher from that would be 6. And one octave higher from that would be 8. And then operator 2 is running 14.5 on... This is basically a saw wave with some... Let's see, how do you get the little shakiness in there? Probably some of these settings, like this right here. Yeah, one of these. Can you do like a saw wave and a sine wave? That's interesting. And then operator 3 is sine wave at 0 0.5. Operator 4 is a sine wave at 2.0. 5 is a saw wave at 0, but 12.0 HZ. And then 6 is a sine wave at 2. And then none of the filters were used, just operator 2 was running at like negative 30 through the output. And then operator 2 here, operator 2 was going to negative 30 through operator 1. Operator 2 was going through plus 30 through operator 5 going to the output. And then 3 is just going straight through the output without any effects. So that's what's going on inside of the citrus here. And I put this on a track 18 where I put on a reverb because I want it to sound a little more interesting. So this, and I have this fading in. So I already showed you how I made this, but now it's at 100%. So it's just playing the same thing as it was in the intro. And then in that spot where it normally was dead space, I added in some low screeches. Now for the second growl, the only difference I did was instead of having unique kind of little um, growls in the cutoff, I just left the cutoff onto 100%. So it's full. <laughs> And then how I got this to rise up was I just kind of brought each, everything up. And I did that all for the second half of this drop. And then right here before it goes to the second half, I just added in a little growl, but um, bring it up to A1, back down to A0. So it brings it down an octave. So that's what I have in there. That's kind of like what you hear from the drop. And then I have this creepy kind of watery bass playing. Very slow. And the sub bass is playing and the drums. This is the drum loop. Let me solo it. So pretty basic drum loop, nothing too special, and I have noise going in and out. So for the second part, it's the same thing, playing just has the rising of pitch. 
Um, that's basically it for just the drop. Now for the drop B, I did do a bunch of different stuff. So just in this bass. The automation is exact same. The automation did not change at all, except the second part where it is the channel volume of the clip. I brought it down um, with a um, uh, kind of like a straight line instead of a curved line. And it's running a different pattern. It goes from A to A2. So it just goes up an octave there. And this growl right here is it is the same growl from here. Just it resets instead of playing the whole thing like this, where it would come down a second time. Or no, it is playing the same, the whole thing. It's playing this to there and there, but then it repeats again to this first growl. But you know, it's kind of it's like it's off time a little bit because this doesn't play for two bars, it plays for one and a half. <laughs> Another thing that makes this growl unique is instead of going all the way down, it goes to right, like about halfway. So it doesn't sound the same, but it sounds unique, but it really it is the same, like I was saying before. And then it does the same thing for the second half, though it does have some progression because I add in the hi-hats. The first section didn't have any hi-hats. And then I go down to this bridge here. And then in this bridge here, I had... I just bring in all the elements again, just slowly fading it up. I have the little chord loop fading in, the creepy thing fading in, and the noise. I don't have any drums though, except for this little snare and then the crashes. So I'm just going to go into the verse, since I kind of already went over everything that's in the bridge there. So for this verse, I am playing this loop. Why isn't there any sound? Oh, because of the bomb. There you go. So I'm playing that with this little bass. So now, what you probably want to know how I did is the lead here. This lead, I made the synth in a harmor. So I'm going to go into the pattern in a little bit, but for this lead, I put up the harmonizers all the way, well just the harmonizer amount, and then unison up to 9. That's all I did inside of the harm war, it's really simple, there's just a saw wave, and then I put on an EQ, boosting some highs, like that's really slight, and a reverb, and then an Edison, because it looks like I was recording something. Yeah, this was the chords I was recording earlier to make this loop right here. Well, to make this loop here. This loop. <laughs> that was the recording. So it is the very same synth. But the pattern is off time slightly. And I, I am very aware that it is off time, and I wanted to keep it that way because I thought it was interesting that it's not exactly on time. It did, it was pretty interesting right here, and I put the chords along with it, playing the same note, and the chords are off time as well. And then for the second section, I have some progression. That is what's playing the lead there, and then I have the drums with the hi-hat separate again.
and that's what makes up the verse there. And I have a second bridge, and on the second bridge, um, it's kind of the same as the first, though the growls are different for the FM bass. And the second drop is completely different. <laughs> And for these little high-pitched squeals, I just call them doodads because they're kind of random, is doing this. So I got them to fade in, just with the velocity. I really just did this. Just did that with the mouse. Um, to get them to fade in. And then for the second one, it's just playing every so often at, uh, at again, uh, incoming velocity. And that kind of added some dynamics when they were both coming in with the louder and quieter. It just made it a little unique. And then I have the creepy also on a pitch rise here. I know I named things kind of odd, but it's just how it works. So it's rising with a pitch there. And then the drums actually break into a beat rather than just kicks to rise it. And then this goes kind of like a classic dubstep drop here. For the second one, I know it doesn't have very much of a tie into the first one. Just a... And it does that for two measures, and on the second measure... I added more details. So the reason I wanted it to be different for the second drop, and I did this again in violence, in violence I did the same thing. It kind of was just, I wanted to have it be unique, like I didn't want to play the same thing again, and I could have done some variations to it, but I just wanted to do something completely different here, so. If you are into making music too, which you probably are because you're watching this, you probably can relate to that. But if you have a set formula then and that works, then you keep going with that. But this is just kind of what I thought would work here. So that's why I did that. Um, and I have the drum. It's playing the same drum beat as it was in the last drop. So there is some similarities, and it's using the same sounds. So, into drop B, it plays the same thing that it did in the last drop B with this bass. Or in the other drop. With the doodads. The reason I added these in here was because, since they were playing here, they were originally were not in the drop B. But then the drop B sounded very alienated because these weren't here, so I left them in. And it made it kind of tie together much more. So that's why I kept those in here. And then it's really the same as the last drop beat. And then for the first half, I took out all the hi-hats. The second half, I put in the hi-hats. And it goes into the final verse here. Oh, well, first I'm going to show you this. So for this one, I just changed it up instead of being all in A. Just some different notes. And they were all minor notes. Just to keep that in mind. That I wanted them to be... Not super in tune. I just thought it sounded interesting. And then for the verse, the first bar is just... As it fades into the verse where I play everything the same. Um, because I did make the second one unique with this first little bar. So I didn't feel like I needed to change anything here then. And I still feel the same now. I still wouldn't have changed anything in here. Even now, so I made the song a really long time ago too. And then right after the verse, it goes to the outro, where I just fade out every single track that was playing from the verse. Like the drums just go to hi hats. The sub stays though. The chords and the lead start fading out. The creepy bass line thing fades out, and the FM synth fades out. So that was the behind the scenes for Immortal Grace. I do hope you enjoyed it. And next week's video, I'm uncertain on what that will be, but click up here to watch last week's video on the little eye somewhere up in here. You can click that to watch last week's video. 
and I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys in next week's video. Bye.